Mythology, it seems, is all the rage. Over two previous parts, we've managed to traverse the many texts and scriptures of ancient customs and cultures, many of which have carried through to modern times, where their analogies still find a cautionary place in our contemporary way of thinking. Mythology is important, no matter its place in ancient history, because it encapsulates the essence of a very human condition. But the canon of these creations also serve to inspire and augment a particular way of looking at the world. And most importantly, hidden within their allegories are some truly terrifying tales. So let's take a look, shall we? Hello horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, top five scary videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host, Jack Finch, as today we curiously take a look at the top five scariest mythological gods in history, part three. Roll the clip. I am For the curious amongst you, that clip was from the awesome TV series American Gods, based on the even more awesome novel of the same name by Neil Gaiman. And for those of you that haven't read it yet, I sincerely urge you to do so, as it's one of the most captivating and important tales written in a long, long time. And consider this an honourable mention for Odin, because he's the bearer of more terrifying stories than you can shake an eight-legged horse at. On that note, I guess we better get started. Kicking off at number five, a pep. And it's important to note that Egyptian mythology is incredibly vast and journeyed, and its creation myths stretch far and wide. One of the most important gods in ancient Egypt was Ra, creator of the sky, the earth and the underworld, and the bringer of light. But of course, you can't have light without the dark, so enter this guy, Apep, the ancient Egyptian embodiment of chaos and the one true opponent of the forces of good. Also known as Apophis or Apoph, this chaotic deity often appeared in the form of a giant serpent, and his only true purpose was to bring torment and ruin to Ra in an endless battle of blood and chaos. I mean, there aren't many grey areas in this particular mythos, Apep is literally the embodiment of all evil, but it's in the great lengths that the ancient Egyptians went to to combat this guy where the grisly nature of Apep can reveal just exactly how strongly they feared him. Apep was thought to encompass the world, wrapping his coiled body around the planet just below the horizon, lurking within the lands of the dead and the underworld. To combat him, Egyptian priests would create wax models of serpents, or in in many cases actually hoard live snakes and tear them to pieces in a ritualistic act of mutilation, burning their bodies in the thousands. They feared him so much that they'd carve protective spells into their dead so that when they awoke in the underworld, they'd have a fighting chance against the evil of a pep. That's dedication. Coming in next at number four, Hades. Because really, in all reality, we can't talk about any kind of lord of the underworld without giving credit to the true guy who hails downstairs. Hades. And no, not the James Woods version because black robes and flaming blue hair aside, Hades was actually a terrifying deity in Greek mythology, so much so that the ancient Greeks even feared to speak his true name. In fact, compared to other Greek gods, little was recorded about Hades, as the ancient Greeks were terrified of marking his image in fear of attracting his attention. When offering up sacrifices to him, the Greeks would cover their faces or perform the ceremony with their eyes closed in fear of catching his gaze. There are also several stark connections to a death cult connection to Hades, a secret sect of worshippers that believe that Dionysus, the god of wine and revelry, was actually the youthful form of Hades, and in the lustful practice of gluttony and indulgence, they were actually worshipping the lord of all death. Hades is an incredibly interesting figure in Greek mythology, and yet despite his terrifying reputation, he was also a pretty just and fair figure that would often give mortals the benefit of the doubt when staring down their immortal death. Or maybe he was just doing that for kicks. Yeah, it was probably that. Next up at number three is Anami. And for this entry, we're going over to Japanese mythology and the creation myths of the Shinto religion. Shinto is a practice of duality, of both life and death, all of which is encapsulated in the goddess Izanami no Mikoto, which means she who invites, which is a little disconcerting already, isn't it? In Japanese mythology, Izanami is the goddess of both creation and death, and she began her reign as the wife of the creation god Izanagi, where she gave birth to the many deities of Shintoism. But it's in the tale of her final birth where the horror of Izanami truly got turned up a notch. After dying during childbirth whilst giving life to the deities of the incarnations of fire, Izanami was buried in a tomb and her essence was transferred to Yomi, the shadowy land of the dead. Enraged by her death, her husband Izanagi journeyed to the underworld to find her, but couldn't as the encroaching shadows hid her appearance. She spoke to him from behind the veil, telling Izanagi that she had already eaten the food of the underworld and couldn't leave. Izanagi straight up refused to accept this and swore never 
to leave her, but as he struck up a torch, the light revealed the truth of Izanami. The once beautiful and graceful form of Izanami had turned into a husk of rotting flesh with maggots and foul creatures crawling over her ravaged body. Well, as you would, her husband decided to get the hell out of Dodge, but Izanami chased after him, shrieking and cursing him for leaving her. She was so furious that she swore to reap 1,000 souls a day just to spite her previous love. Well, Izanagi replied that he would give birth to 1,500. What a comeback. Coming in at number two, Nurgle. And we're heading way, way back to ancient Mesopotamia, to the lands of Akkad, Assyria, and Babylonia, where this guy ruled with an iron fist. Also known as Era or Era, Nurgle is the ravenous god of war, plague, death, and disease, and collected titles such as the Furious One and the Raging King. But to be honest, Nurgle was so ridiculously powerful that he only ever weighs war out of pure boredom. Initially, Nurgle was the god of war, often drawn as a proto form of Ares in Greek mythology, but in later stages, he also became the god of death and the underworld. And how did he do that? He literally stormed the gates of the land of the dead with a small army of demons and took over the place by force. Well, I guess that's one way to do it. In another myth involving Nurgle, one day he was feeling dull and bored, and so to spice things up a bit, he decided to just straight up attack the great city of Babylon, which was then under the protection of Marduk, the most powerful of all ancient Mesopotamian gods. Through trickery and deceit, Nurgle managed to distract Marduk long enough to completely slaughter the innocent citizens of Babylon, and once his bloodlust was sated, he reassured the survivors that a great leader would soon return to protect them, so they needn't worry about dying. What the hell? Oh, dude, talk about mind games. Yeah, out of pretty much all of the gods in mythology, this guy was the personification of watching the world burn just for the sake of it. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, Chernobog. And this guy is so damn mysterious that scholars are still arguing to this day as to his true motivations in Slavic mythology. In many Eurasian proto religions, the concept of dualism was a key theme, with light and darkness being two clear opposing forces, but were also given the same sense of worship and importance in their ritualistic understanding. Bilobog also also known as the Light God, was held as the progenitor of all things good in the world. But in contrast, his counterpart, Chernobog, the Dark God, was seen as the orchestrator of all things bad and terrible, and responsible for mortal misfortune. Now, this dualistic theme is what makes Slavic paganism so damn interesting. But nevertheless, Chernobog always lived up to his name, and was ritualistically portrayed as grotesque, intimidating, and accursed. But nevertheless, Chernobog always lived up to his name, and was ritualistic portrayed as grotesque, intimidating, and accursed, a monstrous figure that need only utter a few curses to bring complete folly to mankind. It is in the fear of the unknown where the terrifying potential of Chernobog truly lies, but there's actually a quiet sense of comfort in the Slavic worship of the Dark God. As the Germanic priest and scribe Halmod of Basau wrote, during Slavic ritualistic feasts to appease their pantheon of gods, a bowl of potent spirits were passed around, and each person would utter the names of their gods, Bilobog, but most importantly, all also Chernobog, and it was of the utmost importance never to leave the name of the bad god out, in fear of attracting the attention of his mortal misfortune. You've got to take the rough with the smooth, after all. Well, there we have it, horror fans. Our list for the top five scariest mythological gods in history, part three. Whew, we're racking them up already, aren't we? Well, what did you guys think? Do you think we could add a few more terrifying entries to this top five series? Let us know your thoughts as well as any choice picks of your own down in the comment section below. Before we depart from today's video, though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more resounding remarks from part two of this particular list. First up, Stuart Guy says, I rate this episode four beers and two tequila shots. Good job. Wow. That's quite a score for a nine and a half minute video. I don't know whether to be impressed or worried. Good job, Stuart Guy, either way. And finally, Boris the Cat says, Jack Finch, you are the greatest. What is your favorite type of chips? Crisps, in parentheses. No, Boris the Cat, you are the greatest, but thank you very, very much. Now, I'm pretty partial to quite a few potato-based snacks, but there's only one winner. Pickled Onion Monster Munch, if you know, you know. Well, on that note, horror fans, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just top five scary videos in particular, please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You'll be watching top five scary videos. And until next time, please, you take it easy. Bye.